And now it's time for Southern California's sports fishing voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, rock cod Rick Maxa, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Yamaha of Boards, official motor sponsor of Let's Talk Hookup. Royal Polaris, the world's finest long-range sports fisher. By Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup and Shimano Rods and Reels. Fish with the best, Shimano. Get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray and Rock Cod Rick Maxa. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup. I'm Pete Gray. Rock Cod Rick Maxa is on the Royal Star on his long-range trip there, our Let's Talk Hookup trip down to the islands with Captain Tim Ekstrom. We'll be hearing from him sometime this weekend. In the studio with me, Mr. Gary Graham, outdoor writer and fishing legend here in Southern California. We're going to be talking a lot of fishing here on Southern California's Sport Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup, Mighty 1090. The summer fishing season this year was nothing short of incredible, and everyone I talked to is expecting continued success well into the fall season. Your San Diego County Ford dealers are having a remarkable summer, too, with no sign of slowing down. They continue to hook people up with a great selection of models that offer outstanding MPG and advanced technology, like the fun-to-drive Focus and the popular Fusion, available as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Ford also has an impressive list of SUVs, like Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Well, no matter what you need, Ford has an SUV for you. And for serious fishermen that have boats to haul and gear to move, you can't beat the Ford F-150. It's not only stronger than ever, it's 700 pounds lighter, so it's faster and more efficient. Bottom line, Ford cars and trucks and SUVs are built for San Diego. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. The Sport Fishing Association of California is taking a leadership role to broaden the fishing opportunities for Southern California anglers. And Saturday, December 12th, Pete Gray will be trying Traveling to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with the president of SAC, Captain Ken Frankie, and his staff to host a very important live broadcast from Pueblo Benito Rose Resort in Cabo. The broadcast will feature some key personnel from Mexico fisheries and help strengthen the ties with the sport fishing fleet in Southern California and Mexico. They will also discuss the great fishing opportunities available in Cabo San Lucas. SAC's mission is to promote tourism through marine recreation and educational activities while protecting ocean resources. By working together with Mexico, we can show our care for the resources, both at home and across the border, and our desire to take an active role to help protect the future of our fisheries. So mark your calendar for Saturday, December 12th, a very special live broadcast from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with the Sport Fishing Association of California. Check CaliforniaSportFishing.org for more information. Many years ago, Baja pioneer Bob Van Warmer found the area he called the Great Fish Trap in the East Cape of Southern Baja and built what is now regarded as the premier East Cape resorts of Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Today, following in their father's footsteps, Bob's sons, Bobby, Chucky, and Eddie, have taken Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol to new levels with the largest sport fishing fleet in Mexico, a luxurious spa, and top-of-the-line resort amenities. Van Warmer resorts have become a destination for travelers worldwide. But for us, Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol are just a short two-hour flight away. No other tropical fishing destination offers the experience and value that you'll find at Palmas de Cortez and Playa del Sol. Now you can plan your Baja fishing vacation quick and easy by visiting VanWarmerResorts.com. And when you're ready to book, it's quick and easy. Or simply call 877-777-TUNA for more information. Van Warmer Resorts, the East Cape's finest. The new Shimano Torium HG is here. And you'll be able to experience this fantastic reel now at your local Shimano dealer. The new Torium is up to 30% smaller than the previous generation, but still has the same line capacity. The smaller S compact body design and one-piece die-cast aluminum frame provides more rigidity and lighter weight. Torium now has EI surface treatment and has tested up to 700 times the corrosion resistance of past models. The new Shimano Torium HD is not only better on the outside, the inside is amazing. With a cross-carbon drag providing up to 24 pounds of drag pressure from a star drag reel, it has a 
a sealed roller clutch and 6.2 to 1 brass gears. The machined aluminum handle has a larger knob to make it easy to crank in the big fish. The new lightweight aluminum spool gives you better casting and control. Available in three sizes, the Torium HG is the next evolution in compact, rigid, and powerful saltwater star drag reels. Get it now at your local Shimano dealers. Welcome back to Let's Talk. Hook up on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here. As I said, Rock Cudrick Max is on the Royal Star. Saw them off on Monday, and they arrived in the fishing grounds uh, yesterday. And uh, hopefully we'll hear from them this weekend to hear what's going on down there uh, on the big tuna trip on the Royal Star. Hey, great guest in the studio, Mr. Gary Graham. Good morning, Gary. Good morning. I, nev- I never know how to introduce you because you do so <laughs> many things. Former janitor will yeah, work. <laughs> right. You know, fishing legend, first of all. You uh, Kind of your roots are here in Southern California fishing, right? Right. I was born and raised in San Diego. Yeah. Fish for bat rays on, on shelter, not shelter island, actually on Harbor Drive before there was a shelter island. So yeah. I've been around for a while. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> now you're really dating yourself, right? <laughs> and then, uh, of course, you became uh, well known for your uh, expertise at catching marlin, right, in yeah. Southern California, which is it's quite something. And yeah. and how about that marlin year this year? Oh, unbelievable! About that huh? yesterday, it's just unbelievable. Somebody called me and wanted to interview me about what I thought about what the season was. And I explained it was just, you know, it it's never happened like that before. It's it, 1931. There was this uh, record blue blue marlin that was caught. And that marlin has stood until this year and still stood. Built but it. there were just two, barely it, just barely. There were two six hundreds over six that were caught this year, at least. And uh, it's just you know, nothing like this is ever. It's unprecedented. It's yeah. never happened. The before. number of. Everything, Wahoo, you know. Yeah, Wahoo. It, you yeah. ever heard of Wahoo back in the day? Not in that numbers. And, no. and very, you know, it was just a very big rarity, actually. Yeah. I, I talked to Hoos yesterday, and he was at. Uh, the Bob Hoos? Uh, the Bob Hoos. Really? Yeah. yeah. Actually, he talked to me. <laughs> 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 but he was saying that he was at Benito's last week, and it was just unbelievable. Blue water, no no off-color water, no kelp, no calicos, no yellows. It was all Wahoo. Straight Wahoo. Wahoo. Straight yeah. Wahoo. At straight Wahoo. Yeah. yeah. And no, no yellows. That's funny. Yeah. But anyway, so the guy had I got all done with the interview and he said, well, what do you what do you think is going to happen next year? And I said, didn't you hear what I just said? This is unprecedented. How do you think I would know what's going to happen? I have no idea, but I will make one prediction. Every Marlin, first Marlin flag will be taken on the first day of the year. Is that right? I believe okay, yeah. they're still here, is what yeah, you're saying. Exactly. Yeah, pretty impressive. And you know, first tuna too. There's very likely that stuff to yeah. coop up, and it's still here. Yeah, I know uh, I San think... Diego's still catching them uh, on the three quarter day run out of San Diego. Right. Still, yeah. It's 60 tuna yesterday, so yeah. it's still here. Yeah, it's still here, and it's and it's strung all the way down the coast, you know. Yeah. So and the water conditions are just great. And the current's still running uphill, uphill I'm told. Which is yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, me. you know, it could it could go. Just keep on going. I don't know. I have no idea, but it'll be fun to watch. Yeah, it <clears> certainly <throat> will. Now, how did that affect you? just finished a long, long stint down in the Baja, in southern Baja. You did uh, all the different tournaments of Bisbee and the... And and all and then the, the Western Outdoor News Los Cabos Tuna Jackpot Tournament. What? How did it affect everything down there? Positively or negatively? Would you say? Negatively. Negatively. Yeah. Actually, because the fish were up here, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Lasley, I I talked to Lasley before the black and blue, and I said, well, give me a quote. Tell me what you think. And he said, well, I wish they had a second. Uh, we could leave from San Diego. I'd fish there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he knows. There's yeah. no doubt about that. But yeah, uh, but yeah, the uh, the blacks and blues just weren't there. There weren't any really big fish. There were a few, few fish caught, but nothing. I mean, all the fish in the biggest fish in the uh, black and blue was four ninety nine, I think. Wow. Wow. And how many boats were in the black and blue? Uh, 123, wow. right up in there. Yeah. So. And well, then, that would make the Western Tuna, Outdoor News Tournament the largest tournament in Cabo. As far as team numbers, yes. Wow. Uh, as far as money, it's second. Yeah. But uh, as far as team numbers, definitely the largest this year. Yeah. Let me, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Bisbee black and blue is somewhere around seventy thousand dollars per team to be all in seventy two seventy two thousand dollars to be all in all be in. all in in the western outdoor news tournament how much is it oh the 
I'm not sure of the exact number, but it's nowhere near that, yeah. like five grand or something. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 it's, it's yeah. quite a bit less. Quite a bit less. Yeah, significantly <laughs> less. But and well run tournament. I mean, Pat's been doing a great job with that, and it's you know, really. A, I, I just wrote a story about what really fascinated me about that is the team spirit. Mm -hmm. the, that and I, the name of the story I wrote was team spirit because all of those teams down there they just love it and they come back every year. Mm -hmm. I mean, and and they're back with T-shirts and they've got the number of years they've been fishing it and they're just enthusiastic and i've been there now five six years and every year the old the guys that were there are there and their new guys start now yeah you know? and, and every one of them almost where it's a badge of honor of how many years they've fished the tournament they've been fishing yeah. the tournament i think that it's more the the parties that they come from and not the fishing right fish hard party harder <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's what it's all about there so now you write for western outdoor news uh you write for BD Outdoors Pacific and and uh, who else? Pacific Coast Sport Fishing. Pacific Coast Sport and and the Bite Journal. And the Bite. Yeah, the new Bite, by the way, is in my hands right here. And uh, Gary Graham wrote a amazing article um, about a dog tooth tuna, right? Right, caught in South Africa. It's a world record, and it's well over 300 pounds. It was caught um, stand up on spinning tackle, and the bite came 10 feet under the boat, and I guess they fish them really deep, but it followed it followed the lure all the way to the surface before it bit, and I talked to the guy that, that uh, caught it, and he, they catch them regularly, but not that, and he's caught bigger ones now, but they weren't world records, so. Wow. <clears throat> but for one reason or another, somebody touched the tackle or whatever, uh -huh. but, but this one was definitely... It's huge. I mean, and when you see the picture in the magazine, it'll you know it's you, you do a double take. You How did see. you get that picture? Uh, actually, I, I'm an IGFA rep as well, and I work with um, with the guys back in Florida, and that's they provided that picture for me. Actually, the, they provided one of the pictures, and then I contacted the the angler in South who lives in South Africa. Tracked him down in France, I think it was, huh. and he uh, he provided me with a second better photo. Yeah, and a great story. And a great story. Yeah, yeah. and that's, uh, you know, I, I got to compliment uh, my buddy Brandon Hayward for this amazing bite journal. Oh, it's incredible. It's, it's, he just keeps getting better. Yes, and, absolutely. And there are some phenomenal stories in here mm -hmm. uh, that you will, that will open your eyes to some really great fishing from all over the world, and, and especially here in Southern California. Some, exactly. Some yeah. really great stories about an, an old-time uh, lobsterman from Cardiff that used to launch their boats off of Cardiff Reef there. And, right. You know, stories like that. Yeah. I mean, it's Yeah, and just, he did a great story on the Ponga guy down in, he, at Laurentia Land Arrow in yeah, the last issue. And, absolutely. Yeah. And there's a really cool story about uh, a new fishing destination in Baja, which I'm sure you've, you've, you've probably already, already checked it out. Um, it was a. Uh, it's a, it's it's a new near Sacramento Reef there. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's yeah. a new harbor right there, yeah, right? Exactly. It's pretty pretty impressive. But anyway, the Bite Journal it's available as of yesterday in tackle stores all over Southern California. We actually have it on our website, hookup1090.com. If you want a copy, you can order it right on our store page, hookup1090.com. Just go to shop, and you can order the new Bite Journal right there. Uh, we have the picture of the old Bite Journal, but you if you order it, we'll send you the new Bite Journal, which just came out <laughs> yesterday. Uh, be assured of that. So, uh, and, and check out Gary's article in there, too. It's, it's really quite something. So what's next, Gary? What's, what's going to happen next with, with uh, the road trekker himself? Well, we're working, I, as I mentioned, we're working with Stars and Stripes, a uh, tournament that's held down in Cabo in June. And uh, we're really excited about it. It's a charity. T it's the largest charity tournament in the world. And it's also the largest release tournament in Cabo at the moment. And uh, uh, but it's a co combination tournament that has golf. It has uh, fishing, sport fishing. And then it has what they call spa, which is kind of do whatever you want to do. And then they have a rock concert on um, on the beach every year. And la one year it was the old rockers that they have, and it's a full-blown stage. I'm not, I'm not just talking... On the little, beach. On the beach, and I'm not talking just a little Mexican stage. This yeah, is a full $70,000 sound stage. Wow. It's huge, and the whole deal... The, they take over the Hilton Hotel. 700 people attend this thing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this isn't like we're looking for people. There yeah. are plenty of people, but it, it, if you can get there, you ought to get there. It's, it's one of, all for it charity. Is, it's all for charity. Yeah. They raised, 
They've raised nearly $20 million in the 20 years. This is their 20th year. They've raised nearly $20 million already. This year, they raised $2.8 million in four days. Oh, my gosh. And, and what is the charity? Do you know? It's Big Brothers and Little uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and a number of other charities up here in Orange County, as well as charities in Mexico. They have 100 kids that they have funded their tuition for their entire education through college. Wow. And Pretty impressive. Really impressive deal. Yeah. yeah. Now, you also do in Western Outdoor News, and especially this week's Road Trekker, right? Right. Tell us about that. Road Trekker is uh, kind of, uh, they let me do whatever I want to talk about, and I drive up and down the road and um, uh, in a, a one-ton van that's self-contained, and usually I drive it down in May, and I leave it there at Mark Rayer's house, uh, we live in his Sport garage fishing. at Gen Run Sport Fishing, and he's kind enough to let me store it in his garage when I'm not using it. And it lives there all summer until then. I go back. I fly back and forth all that period of time. I'm I'm there every month from May through November, and then I finish up in November, come back here. This year, that was a bad thing because I missed out on the really good October-November uh, striper bite. bite of year. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't stand it, but, you know, most years it's it's all fine because I'm get i down there where there's a lot going on. There's not much going on up here, so I guess I had to sacrifice one year. Oh, yeah, well. yeah <laughs> for sure. Well, as you can hear, we have a great show lined up for you today. Gary is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to uh, local saltwater fishing, Baja saltwater fishing, and also, uh, we haven't even delved into it yet, but we will, saltwater fly fishing, which you used to do in, when you lived in the K- East Cape. You had your own company. And still do. Still do. Oh, yeah. We still yeah. own Baja Fly. Baja yeah. Fly. Yeah, exactly. there you go. So if you want to join us, toll-free, 877-792-1090. A line open there. And... Eight five eight four five seven ten ninety. A line open there. We've got a couple of amazing prizes here for you today. First of all, we have a pair of Maui Jim sunglasses, the Twin Falls, a really, really super great one. Uh, it has the Maui Pure neutral gray lens and the gloss black frame, courtesy of Maui Jim's. A fantastic pair of sunglasses, courtesy of our good friends at Maui Jim. And Gary has brought in a fantastic copy of a rarity. The Sierra Cortez by Ray Cannon. It's a collector item book. You can't buy it, right? Uh, you can, but it's hard to find. Yeah, it's yeah. really hard to buy. And, and and everybody who's an angler should own this book because it's, it's basically it's a piece of history from exactly. the Sierra Cortez. Yeah. It's absolutely. And one lucky caller is going to win that piece of history from us today. And when we come back, you stay tuned. It's going to be a great show with Gary Graham. Lots of good fishing reports and Fantastic information on Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. Mighty 1090. Get it all at Dana Landing in Mission Bay. It's truly the one-stop shop for a great day on the water. Looking for a fishing charter? Dana Landing had you covered with several boats, including the new Blackjack, perfect for two to four anglers, and the Impulse that will carry up to six anglers in comfort and style. Dana Landing has a huge tackle shop with everything you need to go fish bay bass, tuna, or marlin, plus expert anglers on staff to help. They even have Mexican and California fishing licenses and reel repair. The deli at Dana Landing is a local's favorite with all the food, ice, and beverages you need. When it comes to freshwater tackle, East County Bait and Tackle is the spot for a great day on the lake. The ultimate in rods and reels, the latest freshwater lures and live bait. ECBT has a staff second to none when it comes to sharing their passion for fishing. ECBT is at the end of the 67 freeway on Maple View in Lakeside, and Dana Landing is right across from SeaWorld next to the Dana Launch Ramp in Mission Bay. Check DanaLanding.com for more details. Doing business with the right company always pays off, and Job Site Supply is that kind of company. Selling commercial contractor supplies since 1987, Job Site Supply specializes in quality and service. With lines like Milwaukee Electric Tools, their name says it all. Dependable Job Site Delivery on the newest Milwaukee tools like the M12 Compact Vacuum and the M18 Cordless Shears. With an expansive inventory and knowledgeable staff, make Job Site Supply your source for Milwaukee tools. Check Job Site Supply code.com for more details sport fishing not just for dad anymore at dana wharf sport fishing kids fish free every sunday free half day fishing trip and clinic free for kids 12 and under every sunday at dana wharf join the dana wharf kids club and get over 100 of really cool stuff like two free fishing trips a free whale watch trip and more 
Dana Warp, everyone's favorite since 1971. Click DanaWarp.com or visit them in the Dana Point Harbor, the fast capital of the West, and only minutes from the 5 Freeway in Orange County. DanaWarp.com, where kids fish free. Okay, it's time to talk about great equipment from Shimano. And, you know, heading down to our journeyman Let's Talk hookup trip in Puerto Vallarta tomorrow. And you got to know the reel that I take is the Talica 50 two-speed. You want to catch big tuna, that Talica 50 is the one. Nothing else on the market even compares to the Talica 50 for power, for line capacity, and the uh, castability is the most important thing. You're casting, especially if you're going on one of the local long-range boats, you cast a sardine much, much further. It's like you're casting a small reel, but it's a big reel that has the power to land the big fish. So check it out at your local tackle store, the Shimano Talica 50 two-speed, only from Shimano. The Sport Fishing Association of California is taking a leadership role to broaden the fishing opportunities for Southern California anglers. And Saturday, December 12th, Pete Gray will be traveling to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with the president of SAC, Captain Ken Frankie, and his staff to host a very important live broadcast from Pueblo Benito Rose Resort in Cabo. The broadcast will feature some key personnel from Mexico fisheries and help strengthen the ties with the sport fishing fleet in Southern California and Mexico. They will also discuss discuss the great fishing opportunities available in Cabo San Lucas. SAC's mission is to promote tourism through marine recreation and educational activities while protecting ocean resources. By working together with Mexico, we can show our care for the resources, both at home and across the border, and our desire to take an active role to help protect the future of our fisheries. So mark your calendar for Saturday, December 12th, a very special live broadcast from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with the Sport Fishing Association of California. Check CaliforniaSportFishing.org for more information. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here along with Gary Graham, outdoor writer extraordinaire and uh, local fishing legend too. Uh, I just uh, Instagrammed a photo of Gary and Yvonne Graham on our Instagram, Hookup1090. If you're not on, uh, what do you do on Instagram? You friend on Instagram or you uh, you like on Instagram? Yeah, you like. or Yeah. yeah. So like us on there, and you'll be able to get our Instagram photos. But Gary and Yvonne just celebrated their 38th wedding six, anniversary, six, six. 36th <laughs> wedding anniversary. But you guys have been together for a long time before right. that. Right. So congratulations, you guys. Thank That's you. Fantastic. It's uh, a really great uh, a great achievement for sure. And uh, putting up with uh, Yvonne to be able to put up with Gary and all his fishing uh, stuff, that was pretty good. <laughs> so congratulations <laughs> to, to, to you guys for that. All right, phones are packing up. You want to get through, here's your chance. 858-457-1090 is open. All the toll-free lines are full. And uh, we're giving away that pair of Maui Jim sunglasses and a piece of history, the Sea of Cortez by Ray Cannon, a, a great book that Gary and Yvonne brought in this morning to give away. So let's go ahead and jump into the phones. Let's talk to Levi in Newport Beach. Good morning, Levi. Hey, P. Gray. How are you? Good. Hey, good. Very good. Well, nice to hear from you, Levi. You have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to thank all, like, every captain from, from Dana Point to P. Fourth San Diego because they're really great help. Especially uh, Shane, uh, Shane, the captain on the Sun Fun. Oh, you like to fish with Shane? Uh huh. All right, that's cool. Well, that that's awesome, man. And, and uh, they they run a great operation out of there at yeah. uh, Dana Wharf Sport Fishing. So, how often do you get to go fishing, Levi? Uh, pretty often. My next trip will probably be my 14th trip on any boat. All right. Well, good for <laughs> you. How old are you? Uh, I'm about to turn ten. You're about to turn what? I'm about, I'm about to be double digits. Double, double uh, uh, what, 10? Yep. Wow. All right. Well, good for you, Levi, and thanks for listening to the Let's Talk Hookup, and uh, glad you're getting out there fishing. Keep on going. That's good for you. All right. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones and talk to Matt in Fountain Valley. Good morning, Matt. Hi, guys. Um uh, first of all, congratulations to the thing here, the broadcast you're going to do down in Mexico and Cabo. Thanks. Coming up. Yeah, we're looking. And Gary's going to be down there. Gary, you're flying down on Thursday and uh, going to be down hanging out with us at the uh, Pueblo Bonito Rosé, huh? Yep, for sure. I'll that's, see you there. That's going to be fun. 
Well, I tell you what, I can't wait to see the picture of that dog tuna, man. That sounds oh. like fun. Wait, and, and the whole magazine's amazing. But, yeah, the Gary's... I asked Gary, how did you get that picture of that talk to Tuna? That's amazing. Okay, guys, what's on my mind is I was wondering, uh, I'm 55. I've, I was brought up a long time ago. I've been fishing all my life in uh, Southern California here. But I really, really miss the uh, uh, the monofilament uh, fishing. I, I love sports boats. I've got my own boat. But the problem is, is I'd like to talk about the Power Pro disadvantage. And... Um, I, 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 I miss fishing so bad, but you know, it just uh, the tangles and the, the, the people fly lining the sardine on the bow, and it's going into the stern and wrapping 15 people up, which takes 15 minutes to get all the tangles out. You can't cut the the guy's specter, even though it's his fault because it cost him 60 bucks to put on the reel. I understand the the advantages of uh, deep water rock caught fishing, big cow and a kelp cutter rig, but uh, I was wondering if you guys. And you don't have to answer me right now, but I was wondering if you could maybe call me back or have Ryan call me back later on the week or something. But I'd like to get hooked up on a sports boat, a spectra-free sports boat. Is that possible? <laughs> I, I think in today's day and age, that's not going to happen. Uh, Matt, you know, you're absolutely right. There are people that should not be fishing Power Pro uh, 100%. What I would recommend for them is, you know, uh, a, a a top shot, a monofilament of a uh, hundred yards or uh, or fifty yards or something like that, and use that uh, that Power Pro as a backing. And once you get the, the the feel of it, and like you say, if if you're not feeling your sardine, if you're not feeling your bait, which you can do very well with with Power Pro, um, then you're not really fishing, right, Gary? Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I I hear you. I understand what you're saying, but sorry, buddy. This is the future of fishing right there. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Appreciate that. Let's go ahead and jump into the phones and talk to Cliff in Lakewood. Hi, Cliff. Good morning. How are you guys doing this morning? Hey, fantastic. Nice to hear from you, Cliff. Yeah, I was wondering, uh, what kind of permits would you need if you wanted to trailer your own boat down to Baja? Do you need special for your boat and trailer or uh, just a normal passport would do? Normal passport you need, but you do need the uh, boat permit for your – no, they don't no you don't need no, a boat you just permit. Need FM, just need FM3s. Yeah. yeah. The and FM3. you get those at the border, right? Right. You can get those at the border and, of course, insurance for your rig. Yeah. And, and uh, But beyond that, no, there's no other permits required. Now, there's a couple of um, of clubs, uh, Discover Baja Travel, Vagabundus Del Mar, that can do that for you, right? Exactly. Yeah, right. both the and insurance they're both online, as well as the so, FMMs. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, and when you go on your... On Road Trucker, what do you do? Do you stop at the border? Yeah, I you, I stop at the border and, and pick up my own because it, I pick I exchange uh, dollars for pesos and so on all at the same place. That's really – that set up now at the border is just killer. I mean, it's really easy. Yeah. And so, I, they have parking on the on the uh, U.S. side. You can park there, walk in, do everything that you need to do, get your permit, get your uh, exchange dollars for pesos. If you if For gas is the only reason I use pesos, but it's a lot more convenient that way. But uh, it's really easy. It, it's a, a ten minute deal most yeah. of the time. You know. Now, if you use one of the clubs, can they do the FMMs for you? As oh well yeah, as absolutely, and they'll send them to you. So you you have them beforehand. Before, but, and then you don't have to walk across the border and and then walk back and. Uh, yeah, in this case, when I drive in, I park, walk in, do it, and then get back to the van, and you go across. Oh, okay. You're done. You're done. You don't have to go back and forth. It, oh, you it, don't. It's one building. Oh, okay. Yes. You cross the border in your truck. Well, you, you no, you pull in a parking lot at the at the uh, customs office and in bank Mexico. and so on. No, it's in on the U.S. side. Oh, okay. And you walk in. It's Mexico, but you're walking from the U.S. side. You walk in. You get your permit. You get your uh, exchange pesos, whatever you want to do. There's a head in there, the whole thing. Get back in the car and drive across the line and show and you're in business. Okay. And you're in business. Okay. Yeah. Very good. It's really slick. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Yeah. yeah. And and that new border entrance is quite something yes, too. Yes. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Hey Cliff, we'll miss you in uh, Puerto Vallarta this week on the Journeyman. Oh man, that's a great boat. And man, that, that's a luxury. That's a, something I really look forward to maybe next year. Yeah, I hope you can join us next year, Cliff. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. That does free up a toll free line. First one all morning at 877 792 1090. Open right now. Let's talk to Hills calling us from Ventura. Good morning, Hills. Hey, good morning, guys. How's it going? Hey, going great. Hey, um, 
uh, what I wanted to ask Gary is about the possibility of uh, surf fishing in Baja for sea bass, like Del Marsh was known for, and you know, without trying to give up any spots or anything. Uh, Oh, I'll give you spots. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, variety, right? That was Del, where the spot that Del Marsh made famous. Right, variety, but that variety is just not far from Godero Negro. But the the beach fishing, you're talking to the right person. I'd rather oh, yeah. beach fish than anything. I um, uh, have spent most of my life fishing on the beach as much as I could when I'm not on. Boats are okay, but the beach is better. Yeah, and so give them a spot. Give them a little hint. Uh, Maguna, uh, Laguna Manuela, which is just uh, north of Godero Negro by about 20 miles, 25 miles, something like that. You'll see it. When you pull in uh, to Jesus Maria, if you're going north, turn left in the middle of town. If you're coming south, turn right in the middle of town and go out toward the uh, uh, Pacific, and you'll find Laguna Manuela. If you you'll see a dirt road going off to the to the right, which goes out to the beach, and that's variety. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Has there ever been a, a a guide to surf fishing in Baja written? Uh, well, yeah, my uh, I have one that is uh, uh, is basically fly fishing, but yes, it covers most. Covers of that. And what's Baja it called? Sur. Um, no nonsense guide to fly fishing Baja Sur and then also Magdalena Bay, which will cover surf fishing right, conventionally. Exactly. Too. There you go, Hills. Thanks a lot for the call this morning. Let's head live to the Royal Star Rock Cut. Rick Max is on the line. Good morning, Rick. Hey, what's up, boys? How are you doing? Hey, doing terrific. How's your trip going so far on the Royal Star? Well, we're at the very, very beginning. Today will be our first full day of fishing, and so far it's off to a good start. We had a nice little morning hit for a couple of fish over 100 pounds and a couple that are under that mark a little bit, and we just uh, kind of got off the anchor, and now we're out here looking around. So we're doing our thing, having a good time, and uh, so far so good. Wanted to check in and say good morning. Yeah, good morning. So I know uh, you had a little bit of weather going down, but it was behind you. How's the weather now? Yeah, you know, it was, you, you nailed it exactly. The weather's nice. I mean, it's it's a little breezy, but on a boat as big as the Royal Star, it's really not a big deal. It's 10 to 15 knots or something, and a little bit of chop. We're, we're rolling a little teeny bit, but, but plenty, plenty fishable. I mean, really no problems at all. Weather's, as far as working conditions and fishing conditions go, it's, it's great. No no problems at all. Weather's beautiful down here, and there's definitely some good sign of fish around, and we're just going to keep going, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we get a big hit of those big ones here this afternoon. But definitely some good sign of fish around and biting sardines, so life is good. Yeah, that's a, that's a great thing. You have a great crew aboard there, and I'm sure uh, you had some pretty good seminars from the Gary Sato uh, on the boat, right? There's uh, definitely some, some very talented long-range guys in here, and it's been really fun. You know, Sauce and John Lucius and Gary Sato and a lot of guys that have done it a long time, and everybody's been kind of picking each other's brains, and, and now we're finally getting to, you know, four days' worth of travel. Now we're getting to put all that info to use, and the group we got is going to be awesome. You know, everybody's really, really fun. Everybody's having a great time. Everybody's uh, personalities has got along just great with each other, and we're all having lots of laughs and lots of jokes at the rail, and food's fantastic, everything about it. I mean, you know, you know what it's like long-range fishing aboard the Royal Star. I mean, it's kind of... First class all the way around, and this, this trip is certainly no exception to that. No question about it. You know, we were talking about the new Bite Journal, and uh, it, uh, uh, Brandon got them out to the tackle stores yesterday, and there's a great article in the new Bite about Stas Velanakis, who's one of your fishing partners there on the boat. The guy is certainly a legend, and be able to fish with a, with a guy like he and Don Lucius, the legendary long-range guys, that's got to be a real treat, Rick. It's a lot of fun, man, and we're having a lot of fun. BS in the whole way down, and those guys are good, man. There's no doubt about it. There's a there's if there's bites to be had, you can expect those guys to be bending a rod with it. It's been uh, it's been really cool, and this trip is so unique that it's not a lot of time missed from work, but an amazing amount of fishing time at Point South, wherever wherever we end up. So there's a you know I, I mean this is our first full day of fishing. I think we have six full days ahead of us still. So lots and lots of fishing time down here, and lots of chance for everybody to pick the brains of those types of guys. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to reading Brandon's article when we get back because uh, the guy is definitely an amazing wealth of knowledge and a really great dude. Yeah, a really good guy. And and we'll see you one week from today in Cabo San Lucas when the boat pulls into Cabo that morning and you'll be coming up to the Pueblo Benito Rose, a Rose, excuse me, which is literally right on the beach where you guys are going to park, right down from the office there. We're going to be How on. Cool is that? We're going to be on the beach doing the broadcast. 
Pueblo Bonito Rose, which is, like I say, it's just a, a stone's throw from the office there on the beach. So you can have the Ponga guy drop you off on the beach right there and walk right up and get on the radio with us. Yes, yeah, well, we'll be following. All right. Well, sounds like we lost the connection there on the satellite phone. But uh, Rock Hot Rick, hey, if you can still hear me, call in tomorrow. Give us the update. And uh, we'll look forward to that very much uh, next week. Appreciate the call this morning from the Royal Star. And it's time to find out what's biting in the bar. The cast man is here, Richard Castaneda from Cast Tours. The catch report today is sponsored in part by Fisherman's Processing in San Diego. Hey, it's long range season, and it's time to pre book your processing order with Fisherman's Processing before your trip. That way, you're first in line when your trip returns. And, and Fisherman's Processing, they do such a great job. Why go anywhere else? You can friend them on Facebook at Fisherman's Processing, or for more details, check Fisherman'sProcessing.com, or you can always call Sean or Rosie in the office if you have any questions about your future trip. Uh, give them a call, and they'll take care of you. Good morning, Cass, man. Hey, buenos dias, Pedro, Gary. How you doing, Cass? I'm doing good, man. Hey, Pete, are you going to miss me on that journeyman trip? We are. Why don't you come? Oh yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I figured you. Yeah, I figured you'd invite me now that I'm lamed up with a bad leg. Oh uh, man, well, how's that leg coming? It's going good. I think uh, when I go back to the dock on the 20th, he's going to say I can start walking on it again. So I'm, uh, I'm, I got my fingers crossed. But, yeah. Uh, well, I hey, tell you what, I was talking to uh, Chris and Mark yesterday uh, from the Commander in the Eclipse Sport Fishing, and they said they signed up for Christmas Island with you. So yeah. next May, yeah, that's going to be a fantastic trip. They're going to really enjoy that one. Oh, yeah, I know it. I'm excited. Uh, they're uh, a couple of great guys, and I've uh, got three spots left. Anybody wants to join us? Make sure they give me a call on that, and I'll give the number after we get through with the report. But uh, we're in a full winter mode now, Pete, down in the southern Baja and uh, over in the mainland. And uh, as usual, uh, Cabo San Lucas still uh, is just, you know, giving up some nice uh, striped marlin down there and with a occasional blue mixed in, but it's primarily stripers. Uh, the wahoo bite went, up, uh, went off in the Sea of Cortez up at the Iman Bank this past week. Uh, not a lot of fish, but a pretty good count on fish there, up to maybe 20, 30 pounds, no real big ones. Dorado bites still uh, kind of spread out this past week. They were more consistent and more together the week before, but some nice Dorado. Most of the fish 15 to 25, an occasional 30, 40 pounder. Um, yellowfin tuna, the same thing. The uh, Gordo Bank uh, was giving up some tuna up to 90 pounds. Um, and up at the Iman, the fish were a little smaller. That's, you know, 25 to 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 pound class fish up there. Over in Mossadlan there, the sail, sailfish are going off pretty good there. It's about a one per boat per day average. A few Dorado mixed in with them, but not much going on else. But otherwise, it's, stri- it's sails and uh, and Dorado in Mazatlan. And, of course, uh, the other hot spot this, in the winter is Ixtapa Ziwantanejo. Man, the sailfish there, they had got a hell of a bite going down there. Some boats, six, seven, eight per day releases. And uh, a few Dorado, a few yellowfin tuna mixed in. And, of course, along the beaches, you're going to have uh, the, the rooster fish, nice quality fish, 25, 30-pound fish right now, along with a Plenty of jacks to keep the inshore guys uh, plenty busy there with the uh, poppers and uh, and uh, the slow troll rig baits. But anyway, that's the report for the week. Uh, anybody wants to join us on that Christmas Island trip, May 17 to 24? I got three spots left. It's going to be a fabulous trip. Um, I saw that picture of that uh, new world record uh, 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 dog tooth tuna, uh, and wow, what a fish! <laughs> you want that, <laughs> don't you, Cass? Hey, I'm telling you, Pete. They're there. I haven't caught one yet, but I've, I've heard from the guides that uh, the year before last they had three. One was about 250, the other about 150, and the other one was about 80. Wow. Uh, we had we had something hit last week that did not lack, act like any other fish but a dog tooth. It went straight down, going back to the depths where they like to hang out, and uh, and I had wire on a uh, on my troll lure, and when it came up. That, not, that wire was just gnarled. I mean, that fish was moving like a damn submarine going straight down. Could have been, and, man. Uh, it could have been. This might be the year in May that you're going to catch those oh, yeah. two. I'm, I'm taking some heavy yo-yo so I can get down, you know, that 400 feet, 500 feet where they like to hang out along the reef there. And uh, I'm really going to try to target them this year. I, I've, it, I've, I've got to get one. You're going to get one. <laughs> yeah. PL68, Castman. Try that one out. All right, man. I will. 800. Uh, Five nine three sixty five ten on the web www.castewers.com and I'll talk to you guys next Saturday. All right, talk to you next Saturday, Castman from Cabo San Lucas. We'll be down there broadcasting live.
Good. Have fun. All right. Thanks, Kath. Appreciate that. All right. One line open. You want to get through? 858-457-1090. Open right now. Let's go jump into the phones, and let's talk to Roger calling us from Fullerton. Good morning, Roger. Hey, good morning. Great show. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to see a new bite. Uh, it reminds me that it would make a great Christmas gift, a oh, subscription yeah. to the bite. Oh, yeah. Uh, tell us the funniest thing you've ever seen. Gary? Yeah. What is the what? The funniest, funniest thing you've ever seen. In... On the water. Oh. Or uh, near it. <clears throat> One time I was walking down the beach, and this was out in front of La Ribera, which where the marina is now, but they all the pongas, that's where they kept all the pongas. And, it, and on Sundays, that's really not the day to fish the beach because all the families are there. And it's everyone from the kids up to the great-grandfathers. They're all on the beach together and so on and so forth. And anyway, this guy's hooked up, and he's fighting a fish, and he's got it hooked up on a spinning rod. And he hands it to his, his grandfather, I believe, and he's probably in his 30s, 35, something like that. He hands it to his grandfather, and then he hand lines the fish in while the grandfather winds it onto the spool. Come on, <laughs> really? Yeah, and I, that's not the only time I've seen that routine. That's pretty yeah, cool. But it was pretty cool. That's classic Mexico. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, no kidding. All right, hey, thanks a lot for the call this morning. And when we come back. More of your phone calls, more from Mr. Gary Graham. You stay tuned. This is Southern California Sport Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup, Mighty 1090. Rock Cod Rick here for West Coast Marine and Parker Boats. You see them all over Southern California waters. Parker Boats at the launch ramp, the offshore islands. You wake up in the morning on an overnight trip, and there they are. Parker Boats of all size fishing in the same area as the sporties. There's a good reason for it, fishability and seaworthiness. Of all the boats out there, my boat partner and I chose to get a brand new 25 Parker Center Console from Kevin Kelly and the gang at West Coast Marine, and I could not be happier. Wow, what a fishing machine. Parker Marine builds a heavy-duty, industrial-strength, boat probably overbuilt but that's why so many four and six pack charters choose to operate parkers we thank the guys at pinnacle sport fishing season sport fishing one man charters black and blue sport fishing for their confidence in parker boats Take it from me, if you are ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, and honest deal, you need to see Kevin Kelly at West Coast Marine. Located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa, or check out their inventory and information at westcoastmarine.com. Happy holidays from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. This is Doug Kern. Be sure to get that saltwater angler on your list what they really want. A gift from Fisherman's Landing Tackle and Shimano. We have the best Shimano has to offer, including Talica, Trinidad A, Therese, Stella, Saragossa, Tranks, Terramar, Waxwing, Cold Sniper, Butterfly, Torium, Tiagra, and too much more from Shimano Dimension. Bottom line, we have the most complete selection of Shimano saltwater tackle and the knowledge to help you pick out the perfect gift. Check out our web specials and much more at saltwatertackle.com or come by and see us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. Fisherman's Landing has been the choice of sport fishing anglers for decades with the largest fleet of long-range boats worldwide. Complemented by Southern California's finest charter and open party fleet. From a half-day trip on the Dolphin to overnight trips or a long-range adventure, you can count on Fisherman's Landing to deliver the best. Check the website for all that is going on or call Fisherman's Landing at 619-221-8500. Book now at Fisherman'sLanding.com. For East Cape fishing, Jen Wren is known as the best. This is Mark Rayer. Great service, top quality equipment, including all accurate reels, CalStar rods, and Sibiran electronics, has put my immaculately maintained twin engine cruisers in a class of their own. For memories of a lifetime, just bring your hat and sunglasses, and we'll provide a fishing experience that will exceed your expectations. Our calendar's filling fast, so don't miss out. For packages, two live webcams, a weekly fishery report, and more, check out TeamGenWren.com. We pick up at all East Cape resorts. So let's go fishing. Let's talk candidly about long-range fishing. This is Captain Frank Lepresti of the Royal Polaris and the Shogun. Nowhere on earth will you find a fleet of long-range boats like we have in San Diego. We are fortunate to have several top-notch operations to take you to the most productive fishing grounds in the world. We all offer good food, comfortable staterooms, 
huge bait capacity, and top-of-the-line fish-finding electronics. So why would you choose the Royal Polaris or the Shogun for your next long-range trip? What sets us apart from the rest? It's pretty simple. The boats, the crew, and the service. From the moment you arrive at Fisherman's Landing, the service begins. We help you load your gear and do everything possible to get beginners or seasoned veterans ready to catch fish. When it's time to fish, the Royal Polaris and the Shogun have the edge there, too, delivering the two best fishing platforms in the fleet. But don't take my word for it. Come fishing with us. If you want the best, it's Royal Polaris and the Shogun. For more information, call 619-226-8030 or on the web at royalpolarissportfishing.com or shogunsportfishing.com. XSRS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. The best NFL coverage is right here. Caught inside the pylon for a touchdown. San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. Pete Gray here along with Gary Graham. As we just heard from Rock Cod Rick on the Royal Star, sounds like he's eating well and fishing well on the Royal Star. And hopefully we'll hear back from him. We'll see him in Cabo San Lucas one week from the day with the Sport Fishing Association of California. We travel down south to uh, there. Actually, we're traveling down south tomorrow for our journeyman sport fishing. Two and a half days on the journeyman with Captain Russell O'Neill. Looking forward to that in our group of Let's Talk Hookup listeners. I'm and jealous. Then, oh, and, I'm uh, so and they're biting, too. Yeah. They're, Russell told me they're biting. So yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. And then take an airline from Puerto Vallarta to Cabo on Thursday and meet the gang from Sport Fishing Association in Cabo next Thursday. And then uh, uh, jump on into the Pueblo Benito Rosé and do the great live broadcast from the beaches of Cabo San Lucas next Saturday. And, Gary, you'll be there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's going to be Wouldn't miss fun. it. That's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. So be sure to tune in next Saturday right here on the Mighty 1090, 7 to 9 a.m. live with the Sport Fishing Association of California, Captain Ken Frankie, and uh, the whole gang down there from Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. Let's go ahead and jump back in the phones and talk to Mike in Rosemead. Good morning, Mike. Thanks for joining us on Let's Talk Hookup. Good morning, Pete and uh, Gary. Hey, um, we know that uh, the rooster fish kind of are pretty much in the, sea, the Gulf side of the um, peninsula there, but do they ever migrate up along the Pacific side? And if they do, how far up do you think they come? Magdalena Bay. That's as far as they go? You've hey, seen them in Mag Bay? There's a picture of one in my report last week that was caught there. In Mag Bay? Yeah, inside the bay. But they how catch big? them outside. That fish was probably 15 but uh, I've seen pictures of fish in the 40, 50 range outside the Bocas. But really? definitely. Uh, we've caught, so we see small ones there all the time, the real small ones. And then, but, uh, yeah, there was uh, Captain Juan goes down there from San Quentin, uh, Juan Cook. And he had a, guy, a couple guys down there, and they caught several. And it was, I think it was a week, last week's report or the week before. I'm not sure. It's on BD Outdoors, Baja Bites. Just look at They're all there. And go back a couple, and you'll see a picture of it. Okay. There you go. So as far north as Mag Bay. What right. about in the Sea of Cortez? How far north will they go in the Sea of Cortez? Uh, I've heard of a few up as high as uh, uh, Bay of L.A. Bay of L.A.? Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's quite a way. Not a lot, but yeah, there's some but occasional there. during the right time of the year. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. That does free up 877-792-1090. Open right now. Let's talk to Tom in San Diego. Hi, Tom. Hey, good morning. How are you guys doing today? Fantastic. Good. My question is more, I mean, I love Baja. And, hey, the Rosa, Pueblo Bonito Rosa is a nice place. We stayed over at the Sunset and would take the bus over there. Anyhow, um, if you're going south into northern Baja, say within a day's travel, maybe more or less a day driving, what are some of the spots you might recommend uh, to check out? Well, uh, all the way down to San Quentin, there are spots all along there that are worth looking at. The uh, Are you fishing from a boat or are you fishing just driving down? Uh, well, it would either be from the beach or possibly chartering or going on any type of a sport boat that's available. Well, San Quentin is really a nice setup there. There's a number of people there. There are hotels right on the beach in the bay. And so there's there's a group of different pongas that run out of there. Uh, Captain Kelly Catane is one that comes to mind. Captain Juan Cook, yeah. I just mentioned, both of those guys. And there's more. There's a, uh, there's several different hotels. There's the Old Mill and 
Eddie's place is there, and it's a nice place to hang out. And there is some beach fishing there as well. So that would be one choice for me. As far as Ensenada, most everything you do there is going to be off a boat, not fishing from the beach. I'm not, there might be, there seems to me there is some Estero fishing at Estero. Estero Beach, yeah. Estero Beach. We had a um, feature photo of the week last week. Steve from L.A. caught a beautiful Corbina right there. Yeah, exactly. And that's both surf and fishing the surf outside or the estero inside. So yeah. those would be those would be the ones I would look at first. San Quentin's a great location. Yeah, San Quentin's got a lot yeah. going on. So. And I believe that Captain Kelly has a parker down there, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we want by the way, we want to welcome two. he's got two parkers yeah. in the bay. And right. he apparently very, very good. I've never met him, but yeah. apparently he's a very good fisherman. Very good. Yeah. Plus he's a surfer, you'd like him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll have to go down there and check it out. Yeah. Um but speaking of Parker, we want to welcome West Coast Marine. Uh Kevin Kelly and the gang over there uh, just set up Rick with a beautiful 25-foot parker. And uh, I've owned, let's see, one, two, three parkers, and they're fantastic boats. And uh, Kevin is a wonderful guy. They do such a great job at West Coast there. So we really are very thankful and welcome them to uh, our sponsorship here as our partner on Let's Talk Hookup. And, Tom, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Let's go ahead and jump back into those phones and talk to Doug and Montebello. Hi, Doug. Hi. Uh, I was wondering about uh, the, where's the hottest place you've been to do a story and the coldest place you've been to do a story? In Baja? Well, that's uh, your right. deal. That's your beat, right? <laughs> uh, hottest place. Uh, hottest place would be Loretto probably in the summer. <laughs> yeah. It's hot there it's in the hot. summer. Very, very hot. Coldest place would probably be on the Vizcaino Peninsula in the winter. Uh, Ascension, somewhere in there. Ascension, La Bucana, that area. It gets pretty chilly there. So but that's it's, it's north, very, uh, north of Mag Bay. North of Mag Bay, yeah. And that's that's essential. It's above San Ignacio, for that matter, uh-huh. and below Godero Negro in that section there. That's From it. Turtle Bay to uh, Abriojos, that area of the coastline, it's similar to Southern California. Or California however, it's, it's more like Northern California for some reason. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for the phone call this morning. Tell us about... All your travels and writings. Tell us, for those of us that want to pioneer the the Baja, which is still doable, believe it or not, in this modern day and age to see places that very few people see, what, how do you research that? How, if you know nothing about driving the Baja and going fishing in the Baja, how do you, how do, you do the research and be properly prepared when you go there? Well, I think that with the Internet the way it is today, I'm almost every part of Baja, you can find out information. You may have to go down a couple levels to get to it. But there's plenty of, uh, and there still is plenty of places, uh, that whole, vis- speaking of Vizcaino Peninsula, that's got Asteros. It's got, uh, La Bucana's got a Astero that's nine miles long. There's another one at Astero Coyote. There are white sea bass from the beach there. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on there, and uh, so it, and and most of that is is really untouched. I mean, there's not there's towns there, but they're not very big. There's uh, and you're certainly getting off the main road off of Mex One. I think the other thing that's going to happen too that that's going to change all this is that Mex Five when that opens. I don't Mex know Five, no. Yeah, well, Mex Five is coming down from. Um, San Felipe? Uh, San Felipe. Oh, okay. And it will go down past Gonzaga and then hook up back with Mex 1 just below uh, um, uh, Catavina. Okay. Just below Catavina. And that road is within 35 miles of being totally paved. Really? Yeah. And the minute that that happens, which I'm expecting that when I drive down in May, I will drive that road. But they, they've got... From all descriptions I've heard, I have not looked at it personally, but I've talked to other people that have, and they've got a lot of equipment in there, and they anticipate they'll have it finished by the, by next spring. Wow. And if they do, that will change everything for everybody because if you go that way, you miss all the traffic of, of uh, Ensenada. Tijuana, Ensenada, and San Quentin. You go cross through Mexicali. Mexicali, on down through San Felipe, Felipe. and on down. And the road is, um, you know how the road is below El Rosario where they've widened it there and, and the wider road. It's it's a third wider than it is. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's a, it's, That's it's nice. not a four lane. but Is, it's it, a, is it shorter? Is it sh- a shorter route? It's not Baja? very. I think it's a, a little bit shorter, but not a lot. Not but it definitely will be the, the trip of, ch- or the road of choice after it opens. I promise you. Yeah. Sounds like it. It's going to be pretty fantastic. Uh, you know, 
fly fishing is your thing. And uh, I know that you uh, – what, what, what attracted you to fly fishing? Well, I – you were a conventional guy most of your life, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But, but I, and I, when I got the house in Mexico in mid-'80s, I decided that I would buy a fly outfit, and I did. And, I, and it was an Orvis Green River something or another. But anyway, I bought it, and I took it down there, and I used it for about 20 minutes and thought, this is nonsense. I am not going to do this. <laughs> I do not have to do this. Well, later on, uh, in the early 90s, uh, there became an opportunity to start a fly fishing company. So in order to start the fly fishing company, it seemed logical that I was going to have to fly fish and learn how to fly fish. And I had some of the best guys, Kersione and Popovix and, and a lot of other people that all helped me out. And, and actually, we were Orvis endorsed from the get-go because we had worked for two years to try to get Rancho Buena Vista as a endorsed lodge. And when I got it, when Yvonne and I had finished the project and had it, had it done, took the contract in. They said, oh, no, we can buy a motor for what that's going to cost, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> so I had to call per- Perkins on a Monday morning and say, I'm sorry, two years later, this ain't going to work. And he said, you know, we've been thinking that we'd kind of like to ha- work with you guys. If you want to start your own business, we'll endorse you as uh, an outfitter. So that's how Baja Fly Baja on the Fly and came. Baja on the Fly became. And uh, honestly, it's just another way to fish. Yeah. That, and that, that I, I learned very quickly that it – that the fly fishing community kind of looked down their nose at conventional guys. And I sort of looked the other way and said, look, you know, this is just one technique. You guys can – we can do things with your fly rod. We can't do any other way. Example, if you throw a jig, you're committed. When you throw that iron piece of jig, uh, it's, lure, it's it. committed. All you can do is you wind fast, wind slow, let it sink, and so on. With a fly, I can throw a fly 50 feet and strip it 10 feet and pick it up and take it away from a fish. So I can tease a fish. So with Dorado. Get them all fired up. Oh, yeah. With Dorado, you can throw and, and let a fly hit the water, and the minute the fish turns on it, lift it back up. And then throw it again behind it. And, yeah. And, do and that there might be a bigger one, right? Yeah. And you do that a couple of times, they're not going to let it go away. When <laughs> yeah. it and that's so exciting, too. Yeah, that's so much more fun than oh, just yeah. throwing an iron jig, and, you know, yeah. you know, to me. Anyway. Oh, no, yeah. no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, we've been working with the Southwest Council, International Federation of Fly Fishers, and trying to break this whole mystique about the elite fly fishing right. thing. And I think they're doing a great job, and they're sponsoring these uh, s- these tips every other week. And so we have a tip now from the Southwest Council, International Federation of Fly Fishers. And one of the great things about fishing freshwater and living in Southern California is that the season doesn't have to end. And while a variety of waters remain closed in the middle of November to April, There are many premier trout locations that remain both open and, just as important, accessible all year long. Take a trip to the Sierras and get up on either the Upper Owens or the Lower Owens. Been there, done that. It's phenomenal in the winter. It's so much fun. You've done it, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And, And when you find ample opportunity to catch fish on streamers, on nymphs, on dry flies. Yeah, that's right, dry flies in the winter. I've done it. I'm sure you've done it in the winter. Dry flies on the Lower Owens. Yep. Yeah, good hatches of uh, blue-winged olives or something like that. And in the dead of winter, right there, dry fly fishing. How much better does it get than that, huh, right in Bishop? And as a standard five-weight fly rod and a floating line will do the trick, you can get a setup like that for, I don't know, $100, $125. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's all you need. Uh, get a set of hand warmers, too, which would be a good <laughs> idea. So get on the water, enjoy the free space, and certainly won't come uh, it won't be there opening weekend, which is next April. And just remember to check California Department of Fish and Wildlife on specific openings and closing. These vary from year to year, and you really got to pay attention to that. So that's a great tip brought to you by the Southwest Council of International Federation of Fly Fishers, and we thank them for their efforts to make fly fishing more fun for the Southern California anglers. As a footnote to that, I'm also a certified fly casting instructor. Instructor, all right. So we need to go fishing with you. Yeah. All right. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about that. You stay tuned. Southern California Sport Fishing Voice is Let's Talk Hookup on the Mighty 1090. It's time to get excited about fishing, and Point Loma Sport Fishing has everything you'll need. 
They offer half-day and three-quarter day trips daily, perfect for families and the novice or seasoned fishermen. Point Loma Sport Fishing also offers overnight to multi-day trips, targeting the best of seasonal catches. Visit their website at pointlomasportfishing.com where you can purchase tickets online and get more information on the trips available. Or call 619-223-1627. If you are ready to experience a real Alaska fishing adventure, check out Whaler's Cove Lodge in Angoon, Alaska. The calm waters around Whaler's Cove are 100 miles from any large towns, so you will enjoy a wilderness adventure without any crowds. Whaler's Cove Lodge has some of the best salt and freshwater fishing in Alaska, and there is no need for a bumpy boat ride for hours, you can find productive fishing for salmon, halibut, and rockfish just 10 minutes from the lodge. Whaler's Cove also offers fantastic freshwater fishing in wilderness streams for wild salmon and trout. The Whaler's Cove experience will fulfill your wildest Alaska dreams on the calm water of the Inside Passage or on a spectacular stream. It's your choice every day at the Whaler's Cove Lodge. After fishing, you will dine on fabulous meals created daily by the Whaler's Cove chefs and relax in your comfortable room or cabin. Learn more about this exciting Alaska destination on their website at WhalersCoveLodge.com or call 800-423-3123. Whalers Cove Lodge, a real Alaskan fishing adventure. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. Rancho Leonero is very family oriented. People have brought their children down, and now they're bringing their children. It's not unusual to have three generations of family at the hotel. Grandpa, dad, and uh, normally sons, sometimes daughters. The families come back year after year, and it's a safe place for the kids. It's small, it's intimate right on the water, two miles of beachfront. The water's very shallow in front. There's no currents to speak of, no waves. We have child care, $10 a day for a babysitter. Security is high at Rancho Lane Narrow. It's really unnecessary, but it adds up comfort level. And we really do encourage the families. It's a great place for family reunions, family get-togethers, weddings, we do it all. 1-800-646-2252, 646-Baja. And RanchoLaneArrow.com, there's nowhere that I could think of to have the same atmosphere and the same experience that you get at Rancho Laneiro. We love families. XSRFS 1090 AM Rosarito, Baja California. You are listening to the home of the Aztecs. He's gone. Touchdown. Aztecs. San Diego's sports leader. The mighty 1090. Have you ever imagined casting a fly or a lure on one of the most beautiful and productive rivers in Alaska? At Katmai Lodge, you can catch up to all five species of Pacific salmon. The king, sockeye, chum, pink, and silver salmon, along with rainbow trout, arctic grayling, dolly varden, and other native stream fish. When anglers dream of trophy salmon and trout, the Alagnac River is their destination, and Katmai Lodge is the premier base camp. Being the original river-based lodge on the Alagnac gives the the facility a leg up on the competition. Both experienced and novice anglers have rated Katmai Lodge and its knowledgeable guides as the best of the best. Katmai Lodge is remote, yet offers all the amenities of a first-class lodge. During your Alaska visit, you'll see amazing wildlife, brown bears, caribou, eagles, moose, otters, and much more. Schedule a day trip on their private De Havilland Otter Float Plane and visit the world-famous Brooks Falls. Book online at katmai.com or call 1-800-330- 0326. That's catmy.com or call 1 800 330 0326 for the fishing adventure of a lifetime. The summer fishing season this year was nothing short of incredible, and everyone I talked to is expecting continued success well into the fall season. Your San Diego County Ford dealers are having a remarkable summer too, with no sign of slowing down. They continue to hook people up with a great selection of models that offer outstanding MPG and advanced technology, like the fun to drive focus and the popular Fusion, available as a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Ford also has an impressive list of SUVs like Escape, Edge, Explorer, and Expedition. Well, no matter what you need, Ford has an SUV for you. And for serious fishermen that have boats to haul and gear to move, you can't beat the Ford F-150. It's not only stronger than ever, it's 700 pounds lighter, so it's faster and more efficient. Bottom line, Ford cars and trucks and SUVs are built for San Diego. Stop by your San Diego County Ford dealer today. They'll be glad to hook you up. What a tuna and yellowtail season last year. Many say the best in 30 years. Could this season be even better? Don't be caught without the right gear. Now is the time to stock up on the trolling lure that proved to be the best. X-Rap Magnum by Rep- 
Impala. Every X-Wrap Magnum runs perfect right out of the box. They all have extreme action and a controlled, deep-diving, aggressive swimming motion. The large diving lip partners with premium BMC hooks and an irresistible rattle. The X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala can be trolled at high speeds without rolling or kicking out at depths to 15 feet. Bottom line, the X-Wrap Magnum is the ultimate trolling lure for Southern California and Baja saltwater fishing. With a textured translucent body, internal holographic foil, and 3D holographic eye, X-Wrap Magnums are irresistible to saltwater game fish. Available in a variety of colors and sizes. No matter what you choose, the fish can't resist X-Wrap Magnum by Rapala. Ask your local tackle dealer which is the hottest color and size and start catching more fish. See the entire line at Rapala.com. 